Now we welcome in Islanders defenseman Scott Mayfield. Scott, you have had such a busy summer. We have so much to dive in here and talk to you about. So Kaz is going to get us started with a pretty cool flight you recently took. Yeah, so your brother's a, a, a fighter pilot and he jumped in, in, in one of these fighter... Let me, let me get this right so I don't mess it up. You were in an F-16 Viper? Right? Like, that's that's some sound. Yeah, yeah like, I the, was. To find the laws of physics thing. <laughs> How's that? Yeah, it was um, it was pretty crazy. It was, You know, it was a lot of fun, but it was definitely something uh, not a lot of people get to do, especially with a family member. Um, really hasn't been done. Uh, I don't know. He doesn't know anyone. Um, they're pretty strict about family members getting in there together. So... It was uh, it was really special, and you know it was it was interesting to see what they do on a daily basis because you don't really get to see that too much. I was reading an article that was written just about the whole experience, and you know your brother was talking about when he was deployed in Afghanistan, he would have just enough Wi-Fi to kind of watch you play your games, and, and he was so impressed with the journey that you took, and he's taken such an impressive journey as well, I believe. He's a captain, correct? Yeah, he's a captain. So what, when you had this chance to be with him doing exactly what he loves and, and at such a high level, what was that feeling like for you guys? Yeah, that, that's kind of what the whole thing was about. You don't really get to see too much behind the scenes of what they do. Um, you know, I was at University of Denver and he was at the Air Force Academy in Colorado. So I got to go to a class. I got to kind of see his day to day there a little bit. But as far as the other stuff, the flights, how they train, all that I never got to see. So they were kind of relating, um, they're, they're, they're creating a new system. Uh, it's called optimizing the human weapon system. And so what they want to do is kind of compare it to athletes a little bit. And so that's kind of what it, it was involved was me seeing their workout, seeing the nutrition stuff, seeing all that and what they need to do on a daily basis and then comparing it to what we do. Scott, please, so please tell me you were playing the Top Gun theme song when you were in the plane. Like, <laughs> Fly into uh, the danger zone. Like, was, was any of that happening? I, I, think, <laughs> I think I was white knuckling holding on to my legs. I, <laughs> <laughs> it, was, nice. it was crazy. Nice. It's, it's a feeling, the, the G-forces, all that, you just don't feel that. So it was, um, it was definitely different. You hit on something so interesting, though. So how do you guys, I guess, differentiate with the way that you prepare or train to fly versus be on the ice and, and with nutrition and stuff? Did you find that there were a lot of similarities? Uh, I found the similarities in the process that they do before they go for flights and how in-depth it is and how focused they are. I, I think, you know, I've said this before, I think athletes, they go through a process and they just want to put themselves in a position to play the best possible de game they can. And that's kind of what they do. Theirs is more a safety protocol. Theirs is, you know, they have to be that dialed in to make sure it's safe. So they just, the attention to detail, the little planning, all that stuff is kind of the most relatable thing I saw. Just a little different. We do it to play good. They do it to stay alive and to be at their best. Now, you weren't just flying jets and getting ready for the season all summer. You also got married over the break. We were talking about it off the air a little bit, and then um, I was about to get some marriage advice uh, from you off the <laughs> air, but, you know, talk to me about it, man. How's, how's married life treating you, brother? It was good. You know, we, we met in college, so we've been together for quite some time. Uh, her family's out in Denver, Colorado, where I went to school, so I uh, we were up in Beaver Creek um, in the mountains, and you know, we actually had a COVID wedding. We, we, we were supposed to get married the day before the bubble playoff started. Uh, so we had to push it till August this year, and yeah, we uh, we finally took the next step, and we're pretty excited about it. Well, congratulations. I'm glad that you got to celebrate. It's been obviously such a strange year with COVID and navigating this and still having these life moments, so very happy for you there. Let's talk a little hockey, and specifically the last game at Nassau Coliseum, that overtime winner against Tampa Bay Lightning in the Eastern Conference Final. You scored in that game, and I just want to know, at the end of regulation, what the mood was like in the room, and if there was honestly, like, if any doubt in anyone's mind that you guys weren't going to win that game. You know, I, I think something our team does so well is we don't, no matter what happens in the game, the ups, the downs, anything, you know, we don't put that doubt in our mind. We always think we can win any given night. So that's something that we always believe in. Um, but that game was pretty special. I, I think the the goal that I had and then Bovillier's goal in overtime to uh, 
to really close out the Coliseum with a bang. You know, we weren't thinking that was the last game there, but, you know, it ended up being the last game, and uh, it, it was pretty cool skating off the ice there with uh, the crowd going crazy. In addition to the Islanders and incredible several seasons you've had over the past year, this season you're opening up the brand new state-of-the-art UBS Arena where you'll be playing all your home games this year. I know you've gotten to take a lay of the land so far and check it out. Like, what can fans expect when they walk into that UBS Arena for the first time to cheer on those New York Islanders? I, I mean, I think if you go look at the pictures, it's uh, it's pretty incredible. Uh, you know, it's going to be top notch, state of the art, everything. Um, I mean, here it is. It's beautiful. So I, I think uh, we're going to have the same environment, hopefully, that the Coliseum has pretty loud in there. Um, pretty crazy, especially in some of the big games, Ranger games, all those. So it's, uh, you know, we're all very excited about it. We can't wait. Um, got a little road trip to start the season. But uh, once we get in there, it'll be pretty cool. <laughs> You've got it. You just mentioned that road trip. So you've had two incredible regular seasons. The same team has had your number in the Eastern Conference Final. Obviously, though, that team went on to win back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. What did you learn about those games? And as you prepare for yet another season, how do you think your team can really take the next step and just get over that hump? Yeah, I, th I think we can use the experience that we've had. Uh, the experience goes a long way, whether it's the amount of playoff games, going into deeper runs, all that stuff. So it's been two pretty good years now. So it's uh, we got to take that experience. We just got to find that next level, just that little bit to to get us over the edge. And, you know, it starts opening night. It starts that first game, regular season. And, you know, you don't really think about playoffs too much. You want you got to make sure you take care of business in the regular season and go from there. You know, it's your sixth season as a New York Islander, and through all those seasons, you've had the same tag team partner, really, on the defensive line uh, as, a, as a defenseman. And now you're starting a whole new season with a whole new partner trying to hold down that line. What's that going to be like? What's going to be some of the adjustments that you're going to have to make uh, going into the season with a new partner? Yeah, I, I think, you know... Um my partner definitely is not here anymore so it's uh it, it's a little it's tough it's going to be a little bit different but at the same time you know we've we've played with other guys before um some teams don't even run the same two guys every game so it uh it's just an adjustment it's something that you know you you have ways to to kind of combat it whether it's communication playing with each other before stuff like that so it's uh i'm excited i don't know we have no idea what's going to happen at the start of the season who's playing with who what's what's going to happen so right now it's just focused on me playing my best getting into camp and being ready your head coach is entering his third season with the team he's such a unique personality how does he relate and motivate you personally and, and the team in general yeah he's great you know he, he's he's someone that you can talk to he talks to each guy and he knows uh what guys need to hear he can come up and you know certain guys have different styles stuff like that and he does a really good job with that and then just his systems and how dialed in he is i was talking about that flight i took and just how you prepare and how they are so dialed in before their flights and that's what our coaching staff is i mean they everything's everything's perfect everything's dialed in they, the, whether it's video whether it's meetings all that stuff and that's that's something that helps us out that structure from the top to mm -hmm. uh to everyone it, it, it helps a ton and that's kind of what we uh we pride ourselves in at the islanders and it, it's really helped us it definitely has a trickle down effect and it's been evident in the past few seasons especially in just how far you guys have gotten to go yeah, definitely. It's, it, you know, it started, the new ownership came in, all that stuff. It was kind of a 180 and, you know, we, we've seen results from it. So that's, that's kind of what we're running with and we're all having a good time.